Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly and the federal Chicago trial, which is in day 13 today, um, getting close to the final countdown um, because they said they only wanted this to run a myriad of 30 days, um, four weeks. So, relation that I want to share today. Number one, I thank everyone for being here. I thank everyone for offering their views and their opinions and their beliefs regarding Robert Sylvester Kelly in a positive way. I thank everyone for, you know, just giving us strength. Every time you come to R. Kelly Appeal TV, that's what you're doing. You're strengthening the family here. Okay, so I really and truly thank you. So let me get right to what I want you to hear about what's going on in the Chicago trial. Um, prosecutor Prosecution rests after fourth accuser testifies Singer sexually abused her as a girl. Um, this was updated on August the 30th today. Well, um, I'm going to be recording this tonight for tomorrow. So um, August 30th, 2022 at 10.57 a.m. What it's saying is federal prosecutors rested their case Tuesday in R. Kelly's federal trial in Chicago after a fourth woman took the witness stand had abused her when she was a girl. Nia on the stand said she was only 15 years old when she met Kelly asking for an autograph Anta testifying she told Kelly phone call after meeting him at a mall in Atlanta. Now, two sexual encounters with Kelly in 1996, one at a hotel during his concert tour in Minnesota the same year at his music studio. And Kelly, knowing she was 15 at the time, invited her to meet him on his concert tour in Minnesota and had his staff arrange travel from Atlanta. Nia said she told her mom she was staying at a friend's house that weekend. Nia told the jury that Kelly met her in her hotel room the morning after that concert, kissing her once on her lips, telling her to take off her clothes. Very explicit. She said, um, you know, things. The second incident, I'm speaking like this because my grandson is actually listening. He's 12. The second incident was at Kelly's music studio when she spent the following summer with family in Chicago. She says she brought her cousins with her to the studio, including one who later testified she was there to protect Nia. But during a brief amount of time, Nia was alone with Kelly, said he kissed and groped her. In cross-examination, Kelly's attorney asked Nia about a lawsuit she filed against Kelly in 2002 and settled out of court for $500,000. Nia said she reached a private attorney in Chicago and expressed interest in being a witness for the prosecution in his pending pornography case at that time. So Nia could basically have done this for her own selfish gain, knowing that he was already on trial, going to trial for this stuff. And now here comes another one and another one and another one. You know, this is, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but ended up with the lawsuit of her own. Nia confirmed when asked by defense attorney Jennifer Bonjean that she never called the Cook County State's Attorney's Office to offer to testify in that case. Kelly later was acquitted of those charges and is now accused of rigging that trial by paying off and intimidating witnesses. So jurors heard from more than two dozen witnesses for the prosecution over the past two weeks. Prosecutors said in their opening statements that the jury would hear from, but the government rested its case after calling only four of those women to the stand. The pivotal witness, Jane, Pauline, Tracy, and Nia, defending their case on Thursday. One of these women the same. So for what Jane said, what Pauline said as the, or Tracy as the intern, do we really need to go over this? 
Defense attorneys will begin presenting their case on Thursday. The judge could begin by the middle of five is on trial on a 13 count indictment, including child pornography and obstruction of justice charges. Kelly's former business manager, Daryl McDavid and former assistant Milton June Brown are being tried alongside him, accused of scheming with Kelly to buy back incriminating sex tapes to help cover up his sex crimes and rig his 2008 child trial in Cook County at which Kelly was acquitted. So then there's an ex-wife of Nia's cousin who testified at 2.19 p.m. today. Um, Cheryl Ware, the ex-wife of Nia's cousin, was called to the stand before prosecutors rested their case Tuesday. Okay, so confirming Nia's account that she spent the summer with relatives in Chicago in 1996. Ware testified Nia was 15 that summer and that three of Nia's cousins went with her to Kelly's studio where they spent several hours. According to Ware, R. Kelly came out and spoke to them while they were at the studio. They asked if Nia was going to leave with them to go to a bar or restaurant near Navy Pier, but they told Kelly that they could all stay and he offered to buy them food while they lounge out at the studio. Ware testified Kelly then took them to the back of the studio where they could see an artist later recording music as Kelly was going back and forth from the room. Ware also recalled, a, recalled Kelly and Nia being alone for about five minutes, after which Nia did not tell her anything happened. Okay, so this is by Chicago, CBS News, Chicago, Tara Molina. So at 2.08 p.m., prosecutors call only for of five accusers during the trial. Federal prosecutors have said in opening statements that jury, juries, jurors would hear from five women accusing Kelly of sexually abusing them when they were girls. But the government rested its case after calling only four of those women to the stand. Prosecutors did not explain why the fifth accuser was not called to testify. After the prosecution rested his case, U.S. District Judge Harry Lindenweber gave jurors the day off on Wednesday, with testimony set to resume on Thursday when the defense begins presenting its case. Lindenweber uh, said he expects closing arguments by middle of next week. Now, 2.01 p.m., Kelly's defense attorney questions Nia about travel arrangements. R. Kelly's lead defense attorney, Jennifer Bonjean, largely focused her cross-examination on Nia's claims that Kelly arranged for her to travel to Minnesota to see him in concert. Bonjean asked Nia where the phone number Kelly gave her went to, and Nia said she wasn't sure if it was a cell phone, but that Kelly would answer whenever she called, even while he was on tour. Asked about the ticket, she said Kelly gave her for the concert. Nia testified she didn't know the details, but she understood they were on a list at will call. Nia also told Bonjean she could Google the concert and date because it's 2002, adding she doesn't remember the exact date of the concert, though she denied Googling the concert herself. Bonjean also questioned Nia about how she was able to fly to Minnesota without her parents or without identification. And Nia testified she was given a password or code to give to the person at the counter and was able to board the flight. The flight would have happened years before more restrictive security measures were put in place at airports in the wake of the 9-11 attacks. Nia also testified she was able to check in to the hotel Kelly had arranged for her without ID by just giving her name at check-in. As for the limo that picked her up at her mom's apartment to take her to the airport for the flight to Minnesota, Nia told Bonjean her mother wasn't suspicious because she was gone for work already and she had told her mom she would be spending the weekend with a trusted friend so her mom didn't think anything of her being gone. Her mom didn't call to check on her <sighs> anytime, <laughs> at any time did she call to check. So when Bonjean suggested Nia didn't tell Kelly before the trip that she was only 15, Nia maintained she told Kelly before traveling to see him. Asked if she told Kelly she had to be sneaky. Nia told Bonjean she never talked to him about hiding anything from her mom. 
Nia testified she told her brother the truth when he saw the limo that came to pick her up, but her brother didn't tell her mom. Bon Jean asked Nia how much time passed between the concert and her trip to Chicago. And Nia says she didn't remember the specific dates, that it was in the summer of 96. Nia also arranged for her travel to Chicago because she was staying with family. Turning to her visits to Kelly's studio, Nia told Bon Jean her cousins thought Kelly was too old for her and wanted to protect her, so they went along with her to the studio. Nia testified her cousins were also fans of the singer and thought it was cool to visit his studio. Asked if her cousins tried to prevent her from seeing Kelly one-on-one, -on -one, Nia testified. She didn't tell them about anything that happened and she didn't come back looking displaced. So they didn't ask her if anything happened when she was alone with him. Five minutes. As for Nia's lawsuit against Kelly, Nia told Bonjean she wanted to be a witness in the child pornography case against Kelly in 2002, charges for which he later was acquitted in 2008. But Nia acknowledged she didn't contact the Cook County State's Attorney Office, rather calling private attorney Susan Loggins to offer help in the investigation against Kelly. So this is after, um, I guess, the other ones came forward. R. Kelly for sexual misconduct and negotiated settlements for these clients over the years. And then prosecution rested its case at 1250. Federal prosecutors rested their case early Tuesday afternoon after calling four of those accusers. Um, mm -mm -mm. Okay, so I want to share that. And I also want to share this one as well. Let me see if this is the same one. Oh, I told him I didn't want to be um, in a compromising position with him to say they were abused by R. Kelly while being underage. I'm going to let the video um, audio pick this one up. Here we go. This is Sun Times Media Wire, August 29th, 2022. Here we go. Disturbing allegations against R. Kelly in federal court today as two more women testified that the singer had sexual contact with them when they were underage. The first witness, known to jurors as Pauline, claimed she had regular sexual interactions with Kelly and other women and that it was all videotaped. She also said that Kelly gave her alcohol before these encounters. The second woman said she met Kelly while interning at his record label and that he forced her to have sex at a downtown hotel while she was 16. So that is what, um, so let me just read um, so we can kind of decipher what is not propaganda and what is not just being used to exploit the situation. Two additional accusers took the witness stand in R. Kelly's federal child pornography trial Monday, alleging the superstars sexually abused them when they were minors in the late 90, 1990s. Their testimony comes as federal prosecutors say their case against the imprisoned singer is coming to a close and provided some of the most disturbing allegations leveled against the singer so far during the three weeks of testimony. The two women testify using pseudonyms. One, Pauline, is now 37. The other, Tracy, now 40. Both said they're, they've referred to Kelly in the past as daddy. Pauline said that she was introduced to Kelly at age 14 by a friend who has been identified in court as Jane. Jane took the stand earlier in the trial, telling jurors that Kelly abused her on video when she was 14 as well. Tracy said that she met the singer on the first or second day of internship for Kelly's record label and that the singer tried to get her to sit on his lap within minutes of meeting her. Days later, the singer invited her and a friend to his downtown recording studio and did the M word as he sat next to her on the couch. Sometimes later, Kelly forced her to have sex at a downtown hotel while she was 16. I told him I didn't want to have in a course, she said. He had forced himself in me, but when I asked him to stop, he did not. Oh, when I asked him to stop, he did stop. I'm sorry. Pauline smiled and remained poised, even as she joyced it with Kelly's attorneys on cross-examination. Tracy spoke softly, her voice breaking 
Often, as she recalled her encounters with the singer, Pauline said that she walked in on Kelly and Jane, who was naked, in the log cabin theme room of Kelly's Lakeview Mansion. The singer said he was checking her for bruises because she hurt herself. I told him that that's not how you look for bruises. He said that's how he looks for bruises and that he said we all have secrets, Pauline told jurors. Kelly then alleged uh, encouraged Pauline and Jane to kiss and yeah, go further. Pauline said she started having intercourse with Kelly at age 15. And by the time she reached the age of consent in Illinois, two years later, she had participated in numerous um, acts with Kelly, Jane and a third underage friend. Pauline was questioned by police in 2001 as investigators were probing allegations surrounding a videotape of Kelly alleged engaged with Jane. With her mother in the interrogation room, Pauline says she identified Jane in a still from the video, but didn't volunteer more information at the time. I was nervous because my mom was with me. I knew my mom knew that I was that it was Jane, so I couldn't say it wasn't Jane, Pauline said. Pauline continued her relationship with Kelly for years and told no one about her own encounters with Kelly. They didn't have pictures of me. I didn't need to insert myself into that situation, she said. Pauline recalled her relationship with the singer as like best friend meets boyfriend meets dad. Asked why she was coming forward now with her story, Pauline said she had matured. Because in a different place in life, she said, I have direct accountability for having intercourse with him. I could probably have said no or told my mom or someone else sooner, but I cared about him and I loved him. They loved them some cows. Things I thought were cool when I was teenager was teenager. That's not okay when I'm a 37 year old mother and somebody did something to my kids. I'm killing them, period, she said. During a lively cross-examination, Kelly's lawyer tried to point out an inconsistency in the number of times Pauline said she had sex with the singer during the years she was under 17. Pauline said on the stand, Monday, the number was more than 80, but defense attorney Jennifer Bungin noted she previously said hundreds. You could say 100, you could say 200, um, or we did it a lot, she said. I would say whether it was once or twice, what's wrong is wrong. Tracy took the stand later Monday, explaining that she was 16 when she was introduced to Kelly in 1999 by her boss during an internship at Epic Records. She said Kelly gave her his phone number when she tried to get his autograph for a friend. Kelly, whose full name is Robert Sylvester Kelly, was convicted of sex trafficking and racketeering in a federal trial in New York last year and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. In his current trial, Kelly faces charges alleging child obstruction and justice and enticement of minors in criminal activities. So that's what I wanted to update you on. It wasn't really a whole lot that um, we're actually hearing um, because of the fact that we know it, you know, and that's something that, you know, we need to take into consideration when we're looking towards what is being said in the courtroom. I'm, I'm really trying to um, make this as easy as we can to hear it. And I know that the Sun Times is going to, going to perpetrate the information in a different sense of the matter. But um, I do have um, something from Tracy Sampson. Let's see if we can pull that up now. R. Kelly, when she was just a teenager working as an intern, speaking out in a Datelight interview that will air tonight, she accuses Kelly of abusive behavior. We're also hearing from the embattled singer's attorney. I was in love with him. I just didn't know what to do. Like, I didn't know if this was normal. I didn't know if this is how adults acted. Like, I, I just didn't know. I didn't know. Tracy Sampson says she was introduced to R. Kelly while working as an intern at Epic Records during the summer of 1999, starting when she was 16 years old. And he's like, well, can I kiss you? And I was like, 
no. He's like, okay, well, give me a hug. And then, like, when I gave him a hug, he just started kissing me. Samson tells Dateline's Andrea Canning her relationship with Kelly lasted until she was 18. It was then that she broke things off and filed a lawsuit against the singer, accusing him of sexual abuse. Kelly denied having sex with her, but settled with Samson out of court for $250,000. Her first on-camera interview coming in the... So this happened three years ago, three years ago with uh, today. Um, and all I have to say is that it is enormous. This whole situation is so enormous until the only thing that can truly make it all come together is listening to the stories and being open to the fact that we know that these people have come towards the situation. I can literally see it. These women, I mean, if you had a saw how short the skirt was with this Tracy Sampson on this Today Show when the whole world is watching her relating to an embarrassing moment such as that, that she has to explain on national TV to promote public opinion about Robert Sylvester Kelly and she does not file any lawsuit until all the other people come in front in order to have already filed. Now you want to foul because everyone was so in love with this man. He, you know, everybody was in love with him. Was it the love of money or was it the love of him? Because there is no way that a person who says that they love you are going to turn around and sue you for all that you're worth. I don't see it. You know, what is given? That talent that Robert had, that talent that R. Kelly had, everyone wanted a piece of it. And when they couldn't get a piece of that, they decided to go in and get it a different way. I don't believe these women. I just do not believe them. I don't believe them because of the fact that I'm listening to how it's all going down. I'm listening to how it's being said. And even from the viewpoint of Chicago news, if you take what is being said and you really listen to it, you know, a million dollars for the tape, a million dollars for this, 500,000 for that, they were using his money. And yes, they probably did create the sexual opportunity because as this woman is sitting here, Pauline is sitting here on trial, she's smiling and remaining poised. But now she chooses to come out at a time, 37 years old lady, you... You got children, you got grit, and, you're, and then you're threatening people, saying that if this happened to someone, you would kill them. If this happened to one of your children, you would hurt them. You would do this, you would do that. Well, why weren't you thinking that back then? Oh, I get it. Because when you're a child, you think childish, but you, a child is not going to think about $500,000. A child is not thinking that way. You know, but again, again, I'm looking at it from the perspective of being a nurturer myself. I'm not even implementing the logistic fact to this as a technical issue because all of this statute of limitation should be barred on this testimony, on all of these testimony, all four of them and Jane. I don't know if she was part of the four, but Nia, Jane, uh, um, you know, and you get, you get Jane to go get her friend and her friend now testifies too. And then she's the cousin that's supposed to be part of the whole family in love with Robert, with R. Kelly. So they were, they were in love with being in love. They were in love 
with being in love with something make-believe. They were in love with the character of R. Kelly because sitting there, R. Kelly sitting there in the courtroom right now, I guarantee you, that man does not look like the man that they even remember from 1994. And I know that in their hearts that they really probably looking at him like, is that really even him? You know, there's a lot going on. There could be character, character, um, people, there could be people sitting in that seat every day that's different than R. Kelly and just look like him. You know, we really don't know what's going on behind these closed doors and what is really taking place in this court hearing. So I'm just going to sit back and just meditate on this because again, I know that, you know, if I was the, the type that was hurt by love, oh, I don't want to get you when everybody else want to get you. I want to get your ass as soon as you do it. I'm going to get your get, I'm getting get back then, <laughs> you know, and, and this is why I cannot see a woman scorn for that long. Even as a teenager, let my boyfriend cheat on me. And my first boyfriend knew, he knew about me because I made it plain. I let him know that you are not going to use my body as a defense weapon, you know, now, if you want to go out there and do what you do, you do that and you let me know. You be man enough. You let me be woman enough to tell you it ain't going down that way. And I know that I'm not the only young woman who thought that way. You do not use my body as a weapon. <laughs> so, I mean, I truly feel and and this is just opinion based that all of this is biased all of this is double jeopardy all of this is putting things back into the perspective of the old school way of looking at how men did women and robert sylvester kelly is the poster child to that to all the men who have ever done any women wrong and that is character assassination they're assassinating his character, R. Kelly, but putting the man Robert on trial for this thing because everyone everywhere knew what was going on and how he was able to buy this one, buy that one. And I'm sure he ain't the only one. I guarantee you some of these pimp daddy Max back in, you know, the time of the nineties and the you know, look at Joe. Where's Joe at? Why ain't he talking about, you know, his little grinding rendezvous? Why ain't nobody saying nothing about Joe? Why ain't nobody saying nothing about Tank? All these people was talking about all kind of sexual stuff. In their music, they was talking about more than bumping and grinding. They was talking about getting it in. Do you hear me? Getting it in. But what these people are not, you know, on trial for, their lyrics, they're not on trial for that, you know? And they're not on trial for women coming 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 90 years. Shoot, could a hundred year old woman come up and say, yeah, he touched me, I was at his concert. You know, he even had a beautiful little concert with, um, he had a beautiful concert with this little lady. She was in a, a handicapped lady. She was in a wheelchair and he serenaded her. God only knows what, pe what people could be thinking about that. Not that it was something from the heart that could possibly have happened to where he just said, I want to give thanks to you and make you feel special. You know, if you look at some of his tours, people were all on him. So I believe that all this was set up from the women to the way the same. You got Tracy looking just like Andrea Kelly. You got Lisa Van Allen looking like somebody else that he dated along the pathway. 
Then you got the 48 women that ain't even testifying. You got five of them that were supposed to testify and one didn't. Why didn't that one testify? What was so, what was the reason for her not testifying? I hope Bonjean asked that question. What was the reason for her not testifying? And see, this is why I have to calm my spirit down and meditate. And this is why I don't do a lot of the reading of transcripts because I get too emotional. Mm -hmm. I want to primarily stick to the facts that are being brought out so that I can try to decipher what makes sense to me. And so, yeah, <laughs> I have to say that. So yesterday when we had the video about public opinion, public opinion is a very powerful thing. Claudette, continue to keep play, praying. Leonard, keep requesting to free R. Kelly. Yes. You know, these, these women are doing him so wrong. They're doing him wrong. And believe me, it will come out. The get back will come out. Truthfully, it will. Um, in the live, Southern Belle was really on it. She was on it. You know, um, uh, let me see. Ray Johnson was on it. You know, Ray said the government mentioned R. Kelly case in court, which they wasn't supposed to, but wanted to keep the witnesses undercover. Hopefully the jury uses common sense. It's been a bunch of lies. Absolutely, Ray. And that's true. That's true. Okay, it is sad. Mental, keep your mind, baby. Keep your mind. Yeah, in about 10 days, they're going to be closing it, if not earlier. So we must keep praying on the forefront of two Robert Sylvester Kelly that he has the nurturance and the belief in himself to keep going through this because the lies that are being discussed today and yesterday to the point where they even needed a break. They needed a break for Wednesday to get themselves together. You know, lying that he, Robert forced himself on interns, but he paid $500,000. It was good enough. He got the, re he got, he paid for it. So I don't think he was, putting any force upon her. If she took the money, if she took the money, love ain't got nothing to do with this now, sweetheart. You knew you were underage. You knew if this is the case, I don't even know. There's a lot of discrepancies in this case. And I believe that they're using Robert Sylvester Kelly's face as a poster to all men who have ever done wrong to all women. And it's not fair. Ray says, what's so messed up is all the females so far that have testified allegedly can't remember their ages. Isn't that something? I was 14, I was 15, I was 16, and finding out they were 17 years old. Absolutely, because th this was preordained and predestined. Just like telling R. Kelly to be the Pied Piper was predestined for this moment in time. Twenty years ago, 30 years ago. And I guarantee you, R. Kelly is like, damn, 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 damn. Vanessa says, all of the government's witnesses have proven one thing. They all want money and not justice. Absolutely. Vanessa, you ain't never lied, honey. Thank you. Ashley, no appeal. I, Ashley, has never, ever in my life ever met Daddy Robert even both able to get clips of information. They all would sound like the Daddy Robert I have heard. Soft-hearted and so what they say. So she ain't buying it. Ashley has always called him Daddy Robert, and that's who she is, the energy. Ashley, I love your energy. You are the energy that says, I am one who have never met him. I still call him Daddy. And nobody's coming to get you to tell you to go testify, but you better be careful because they might find you and say, hey, if I pay you $100,000, can you go testify as being the 49th woman that just shows up on the record? Some bull public opinion. Thank you, Ashley. 
One thing for sure, the public is most definitely seeing the ugly side of the witness with the aggressive attitudes on the stand. Mm, that's why I'm not buying into it. I'm not buying into it, Ray. I can't do it. Um, Southern Bell had a great, great, oh, Presham talk. He told everyone on the interview with Gail King, he is being assassinated, but he still is alive. Shaking my head. He told us he's fighting for his life. Damn, I hate this for the king. He will bounce back. Just wait. Thank you, Presham. Thank you. Southern Bell said he can now look at himself and see things outside of the entertainer and know what his life should be. Not as painted by what these demons are saying about him. Yes, he made this and Robert has to bring him out. There's a difference between R. Kelly and Robert Sylvester Kelly. And we need to understand that during this time, he was in that starstruck world, just like everybody else was starstruck about him. And he was in the starstruck world as well. Given all this money, had no idea what to do. It's like taking a, a little boy from the hood and giving him millions and millions of dollars and feeding him the best and putting him in the best, you know, uh, uh, attire and then telling him to go live his life without any morals, without any, any mental balancing. You know, come on. Southern says it is very unfair because we know that most testimonies were not true. And Presham says, it's nothing for them to get you to turn your back on your own people. Oh yeah, I see that. I see people who started out as saying, I'm for Robert Sylvester Kelly. I'm going to be with him till the end. And then now they're saying something totally different, but it's okay because this is a public opinion case and we're allowed to have our opinion. So let's remember that Kelly Nation supporters, because we are leaders over here. We're leaders. We're not going down like that. Um, Southern Bell says, it's called freedom of speech, not always the truth. Opinions are exactly that, and everyone has one. Mm-hmm. And Mental Alchemist, I just love your, your, your thoughts, your statements. He says, behavioral cognition creates perception. That's right. It's how we, how we, how we perceive things. You know, the perception comes from the way our habits are aligned in our cognition, the way that we view things, you know, it's, it's really crazy. It's really crazy, but it's a good thing. So that's what was on the top live chat. And I thank everyone who was out there. That's why I love to give my um, subscribers that opportunity to post their thoughts into the chat even after the chat is over because a lot of times you have so much going on in the chat you just gotta listen and then pinpoint something you jot it down so when you get that couple minutes to put something in there it all makes sense and everybody got a whole 10 minutes to talk to text and type in so this is day 13 and I wonder what other clowns are coming up with the little red noses and the and the wigs just standing in a corner. It's no irony. It's almost Halloween. It's almost that season because people use energy and they rise this energy up and they create things. They create storylines. They create backdrops. They create all kinds of things. In our minds. So we need to be the one to keep our energy. So create what you feel about this situation and only what you feel. Because me, myself, personally, I'm not buying into the lies. I have to put it on here. I have to put it on here for the appeal process. I get that. But I'm not buying into what these people are lying about, Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly. And with that, Robert, I say to you in the journal, Entry for today, August the 31st. It is a powerful time. You have a dual dichotomy happening here. And every one of us has a good side and a bad side, um, a negative and a positive energy that runs through our vibration. And many of us have a masculine and a feminine energy 
if not feminine, feminine energy, if not masculine, masculine energy. So to vibe through that concept and realize that we hold the destiny that creates what we desire. If you can take the self-gratification, which is the, the, I guess in the Haslow's theory, um, Abram Haslow has a, a hierarchy of needs. And if you get to the basic self-gratification, I think is somewhere on the third level. But when you get to self-actualization, you are aware that you understand that it's like Robert being able to understand that the Pied Piper story was wrong and he shouldn't have did that. Um, even if it was just only for the flute of it, you know, um, self-actualization is saying to that you can tap into the knowledge of your maturity now. And in that knowledge of maturity, the things that you were used to doing back in the day no longer matters anymore. It no longer matters. And it's just like it says in the biblical premise, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. But when I became mature, I put away childish things. So these women that's coming up acting like they were. So Robert Sylvester Kelly may or R. Kelly at this time as a performer may have been 26, 25, 24, but acted very immature. These girls could have been if they are truthfully telling the truth, <laughs> even at the age of 17, some of them feel very, very immature. Okay. Like some of them act like they could be 12 years old. So even as a 15, 16, 17 year old in a big city like New York, in a big city like Chicago, in a big city like, you know, where these people come from, guess what? Even Lulu. And Solar Coaster was with Robert without parental consent. Robert could have had a baby long before his first child. Because him and Lulu were spending lots of time in that little cardboard box of a house that they had in the backyard. So we have a lot of things going on. Now, would we call him a rapist at that point? If he is used to seeing this stuff happen and, and Lulu had a lived? At what point do we say, dang, that's just, you know, children being children, immature. Because I guarantee you, them 15 year old women, them young girls was acting like they were 21. Trust and know this. Now all of a sudden these little 15 year olds ain't acting 15. They're acting like they 22. I sit back and watch some of these young girls who have children at age 21, 22, 23, that control their children and make their children push the buggy while they're on their cell phones. You know, the little girls walking around taking care of the babies that the mama just had. Who gonna tell this child they're not a woman? Who gonna tell this seven year old little girl that know how to burp her little sister that's like two or one or not burp, like, two weeks old, some, some of these children are five and six. You can look on TikTok, burping babies, patting them to sleep, playing with them without any type of supervision. But yet let something happen to that child while that mother is not around. That child will then be tried as an adult, even at the age of five, six, seven, and eight. We got a world we living in that's all about public opinion that does not validate truth because that's not what's really going on in the, in the households. So man, I can keep going on and on and on. I'm going to throw about 10 minutes in the chat for you guys to talk and, you know, tell me what your feelings are, get it out there, you know, and, you know, just tell me what your opinions are. There ain't nothing wrong with an opinion. This is opinion-based case. Put it out there. Let's see what goes on. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. To all my new subscribers, thank you so much. I see you. You are very visible on the channel. I thank you for showing the love. You know, um, just keep coming back. Keep coming back. If there's something that you need to talk about with me, 
put it in the chat and give me your number. Tell me to call you. We can chop it up and then I could do a video about it or something like that, you know, but keep me, keep me in the realm of R. Kelly appeal, you know, help me see how to best work on that appeal part because that's, that's what's coming up for this channel. So thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. As always, keep it 100. God bless you all, and we'll see you next time.